In this presentation, we will enter bills and pay bills. In other words, we're going to enter some of the common bills that we would expect to see at the end of the month, something like a utility bill and a phone bill. We'll enter them into the bills, which will increase the accounts payable. Then we'll pay many of those bills, which will decrease the accounts payable and pay it out of the checking account. Time to account with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're currently in the Vendor and Purchases section. We're going to be down here in our Enter Bills and Pay Bills. We're going to enter some of the common bills at the end of the time period. Instead of just writing a check for them as we did last time, we're going to go through the process of entering the bills, then paying the bills. When we enter the bills, it will be increasing the accounts payable and increasing the related expense, typically an expense. The other side, then when we pay the bill, we'll be paying, paying the bill, decreasing the checking account and decreasing the accounts payable so let's take a look at it we're going to go into the enter bill we're going to say i'd like a new bill and i, I clicked the wrong one i'm going to close that back out and then click the right one enter bill and new bill enter bill new bill the first one's going to go to verizon i believe we have the vendor set up already so verizon that's our phone company so we're going to say it's verizon and then i'm going to tab through this and say that this is going to happen let's say on the uh, let's keep it up to 28th and then the due date now we could put just in the in the description or memo it could put uh, something like the telephone 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 and we might put something like a period that was covered note that we're on the second tab applying to a purchase here and it is picking the general ledger account for us how does it know because we decided when we set up the vendor what the default GL account will be. So that's going to be really helpful. That'll help us out once we get everything set up for our vendors. It should be very easy. Whether we use a bill or a check, it'll it'll like pick that other side because we assigned it as the main you know account that we're going to be using as we set up the vendor. So that's pretty that's pretty nice. It's a little bit different than other kind of software, which will typically try to remember the last transaction that you had. So it's probably a more reliable system to actually pick the, the, the default account. And if you want to vary from it, it won't change the default account, but as opposed to other types of software. So if, for example, if I was to, to say I want to pay Verizon for some other thing, like a, a new piece of equipment or something like that, and I chose to go to another account, other software would then remember that new account as now being the default. And it won't happen here because you, you got this is the default account. Uh, and that's going to be there all the time unless you choose otherwise. So then we're going to pick the amount, which is going to be the 365. The 365, what's this going to do when we record? It's going to decrease the checking account. The other side is going to go to the expense account of the telephone. Let's go ahead and save that. The next one we're going to say is Spectrum. Spectrum. And we don't have Spectrum yet because that's going to be our cable company. That's going to, going to be who we pay for basically our internet service, we're going to say. So I'm going to say... We need to add a new item, so we're going to say new vendor, please. And the name is going to be Spectrum. Spectrum. Okay, and then I'm going to put that for the name here, too. Spectrum. All right, and then I'm going to pick the account over here. Now, this is our, our cable service or internet service, so we may not have something here. Now, this is you may want to think about, do you want to combine this with something else, such as the telephone bill or possibly the utility bill? Or do we want to put something else uh, in there? I would typically break this one out. So I'm going to say, hmm, maybe I just want another expense account here. So why don't I add a new expense account? So I'm going to say new expense account. And I'm going to say the account is going to be cable. Or I need an ID. So the ID, I'm going to put it maybe somewhere around the telephone expense. So I'll put it somewhere possibly close to the telephone expense that's what I'm thinking so I'm going to go down here and see telephone is the 6500 so maybe like 6510 let's say 6510 and then let's call this the cable cable it's a b not a p and then it's not a cash account but an expense type of account so we're going to select the drop down looking for that expense expenses type of account that's the one we want looks good let's go ahead and save it so i'm going to say save and and then we'll close this out so i'm going to close this on out and then uh we're going to select the account that we chose here which is going to be the cable account which i think was six uh, i forgot the rest of it i can't remember it i thought i could but i can't so cable and i totally <laughs> now i have a b all right i'm going to pick that that's 
misspelled, I'll keep it for now. We could go ahead and adjust that in the general ledger. I'm going to keep it for now. So then I'm going to say save and so let's go up top and say save and then close this back out. So there we have it. So now I'm going to choose that vendor, which is going to be Spectrum, Spectrum, and there we have it. So we'll take this as of the 28th. That looks good. And then we might want to put that as the cable here. It's choosing the correct account, which is spelled wrong, <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to keep that right now. Hopefully that doesn't bother anybody too badly. And then down here, we're going to say 180. 180 is going to be the amount. So this is going to be decreasing the checking account by the 180. Other side going to the expense account for the cable. Let's go ahead and say save. It wants an invoice number. So I'm going to say, all right, let's put uh, a number here for our practice problem. I'm just picking a number for the practice problem. I'm going to say save now. And there we have it. Next one is going to be paid to Edison. That's going to be our utility company. So we're going to say Edison. We already have Edison in there, so it should be easy to set up. So we're going to tab on through this. Dates looks good. We're going to put an invoice number so I don't get it like a, a pop up. So that's just a number for our practice problem here. We're going to be tabbing through. We could put up a, a memo or description. I'm not going to here. It could be something like uh, the, the period that is covered could be useful. And note it's going to the default account, which of course is the utilities expense. And then we're going to say that the amount is going to be for, we're going to say 648, 648. So this will, of course, be decreasing the checking account. The other side going to the expense account of utilities expense. Let's go ahead and save that one. Okay, now before we pay them, let's go in and take a look at some reports. So we're not going to enter any more bills. We will pay them, but let's look at the reports first because that'll be fun. So we're going to go to the reports drop down. We're going to go to the financial statements. So let's go into the financial statements. Open up first the balance sheet. It's going to be for the month of February. That's what we want. So I'm going to pick that up. And then, of course, we have here an increase in the payable account. So the accounts payable account down below, that should be going up. So if I double click on that, then there we have it. There's the, the Epiphone, the Fender, and there's, uh, there's uh, Verizon Spectrum and Edison. So that's the, the bills that we have entered into, into place. Let's look at the payable aged uh, account as well, because that, uh, that's something we can take a look at, which will have good times. That'll be good times. So if we go back over to the reports and we take a look at the accounts payable report, let's take a look at the accounts payable and then look at the aged payables. Aged payables, that's going to give us our information up top. And there's Edison, there's Epiphone, there's Spectrum, there's Verizon uh, that we have entered. That's going to add up to the total of the 2393. The 2393, does that match what's on the balance sheet? The 2393, it does, as would be expected. So that makes me feel good. I was a little worried for some reason. I knew it would match. I wasn't really worried, but I was kind of worried for I don't know why. Anyway, I'm going to close this back out. So there we have that. And then let's go to the uh, reports again. Back to the reports. Let's take a look at the other main report. That's going to be the income statement report. So if we go back to the reports and look at the income statement report for the month of February, I don't need to see the zero balances. So I'm going to remove the, the check mark, the little tick mark down here because I don't want the zero balances. And that if I have it checked, it'll show the zero balances. So I'm going to open that up. So there we have it. And then if we go down to the bottom, we're going to see our information. And there is our telephone, our cable, which is terribly spelled wrong. And then the... Um, interest expense and the utilities so if we were to double click on these then it would show the detail of course double clicking on any of that detail will then pull us to the source document in this case that being the bill so then we'll close this back out close this back out now let's see the other side of things which will be paying the bill that'll be all on the balance sheet side of things so i'm going to close this window i don't need that and i'm going to go to this window so when we pay the bill it's going to be decreasing the accounts payable and the other side is going to be decreasing uh, the checking account. So let's do that now. So if we go back back on over to our, our data input forms, we're back into the vendor and purchases. We have been entering the bill. Now we're going to be going to pay the bill. Now we can pay bill by bill uh, here, or we might want to go to pay multiple bills. So we might go to the pay multiple bills. And then let's say we want to make the check date as of the uh, 29th invoice due on or before i'm going to go all, all the way to uh march so that i see all the invoices by due date not the date that we entered uh or or discounts lost by so include invoices all invoices all vendors so that's what i'm going to say it i'm going to say okay 
let's take a look at what we have and there's a, a list of our invoices that we can then be processing through here now what we want to do here's the, the new ones we made edison spectrum and verizon i'm not going to check off the first one i don't want to be going to the uh, epiphone so let's just take a look at those three and let's be processing this uh, through the date uh, we could do february 29th that's fine and then the cash account is going to be the uh, checking account that looks good that looks good the payment method i'm going to say payment method i'm going to bring it uh, to cash here sort by and then of course we could sort by different items invoice due date or vendor so this is going to be the amount the 1193 and obviously once you process this if you if you were going to process the payroll checks then you'd want to you'd have the external checks that you would have to then process through the system uh, what's this going to do it's going to be decreasing the checking account for these items that we're going to be paying off the other side decreasing the accounts payable so then i'm going to say up top print here uh, I'm going to choose a check number. So if you have, if you're processing the check numbers, you'd be putting the check numbers. You'd have the pre-printed check. So let's say 0003 and uh, number of copies. I'm going to say one and the print setup is the cute PDF printer. So I'm just going to be printing it to the cute PDF printer for our purposes here. So I'm going to say print. So there we have that. And it's going to sit, it's going to be uh, proce process those items. Did the check numbers uh, print properly? And is it okay to assign the check numbers to the checks? So note then, uh, you, you, if you had pre-printed checks, you'd have to put them into the printer. They would already have the check numbers on them. So you'd want to be checking that the check numbers uh, have been processed correctly. This will be kind of a double check to do that because if you put the printers in the system a little in, in the wrong order or in the wrong, uh, the wrong way, they'll print funny and, and you'll have to basically redo the process. So anyways, I'm going to say yes here. So we'll say yes. And then here is our information for the P for the PDF files. I'm going to put this on our desktop or in our folder. So it's in our Sage 50 Cloud account <laughs> documents. And then I'm going to make another folder down here, which is going to be new. And this is going to be section uh, eight, section eight, section eight. And there we have that. And then I'm going to open up that section. And I'm just going to open that up and i'll keep it here i'll just keep it at that and i'm going to say save that okay now let's take take a look at our balance sheet again so now that we've processed that if we go back to the balance sheet then we're going to go back up top it would refresh the report if it didn't refresh automatically mine did i'm going to go into the checking account if i go into the checking account there's going to be our check so there's edison there's spectrum there's verizon here are the check numbers that have been assigned to them so if I then double click on it, uh, I double clicked on the wrong one, but there's a check. That's the wrong one. That's the IRS. This one, let's double check on Edison. So there we have it. So there's one of our checks closing this. And, and notice it, it goes to the actual check form here, of course. It doesn't go to the, to the, to the data input form where we checked off the three checks quickly. Uh, it goes to the, to the actual check form. So then closing this back out, closing this back out. The other side then go into the payable account. So if we go down to the payable account, we're left now only with the 1,200 double clicking on that item. There are the three checks here as well, uh, showing that we have paid off Horizon Spectrum and Edison. Closing that back out. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.